bird songs come from our oral history of our creation. The people, they were lost. So they began this massive march searching for their home. We came to the Mount San Jacinto Mountains here. They could feel that their home was on the other side. They prayed to their God, they wailed, they cried out, and he imparted to them the bird songs. Generations ago, my great-great-great-grandparents were here. Years ago when I was in college, I was taking an anthropology class and the instructor asked how many people knew where their grandparents came from. Several people raised their hand, not everybody, and then he even went further, your great-great-grandparents, do you know where they actually came from? I was the only one that raised my hand, and he says, you're Native American. I said, yes, I am. The Abo Caliente translated is the hot water people. We live in the desert, right? So water is life. Through legends, that's where our people came from, was, was those waters. Being able to say that this is my ancestral home is, I think, one of the most important things for a Native person. We're indigenous people of, of the Palm Springs area. We've been here over 5,000 years. We were flourishing, and then settlers come through, and the missionaries, and being pushed off our lands. Our people were struggling. You get it up to the 50s, and that's when our people felt in order for us to survive, we had to, in a sense, ditch our culture and traditions and customs and assimilate into the, the white ways. The members at that time, when they had their children, um, they wouldn't speak the language to them, they wouldn't share the, the cultures, traditions, customs. Our world was changing, and for us to survive, that's what we had to do. a traditional reservation where we all grew up together. I grew up with uh, my best friends who were white uh, next to a black family. We didn't have a place where it was just us. We weren't practicing our songs, we weren't practicing our language. As we got westernized, we were disconnected from our culture. So there's, there's this new resurgence, especially the younger ones. They want to know more. They want to know more about their language and culture. You can see that they, they're culturally, they're becoming stronger. We take pride in that our tribe is so strong. We own this land, that our sovereignty has been maintained and it continues to be strengthened. I think the source of the, the mental health is knowing who you are culturally. And, and I think when our members know that, I, I think that just makes them a more confident less liable to drink, do drugs. You have a higher self-esteem. You're, you're gonna exercise, watch what you eat. So we do have a, a cultural preservation committee. They have language classes, traditional food, pottery classes. They have bird singing classes. The tribe is allowing that culture to come back. My father revived the bird singing here for our tribe. It was dead. No one sang the old bird songs anymore. My father reached out to an elder and asked him if he would teach him the bird songs. And, you know, the story goes that Joe said, you know, come back tomorrow. Oh, my dad would come back the next day and then he'd tell him again, you know, let me think about it a little bit more. Come back tomorrow. And uh, finally, he ended up saying, OK, I'll teach you, but it's going to be a commitment. And he taught uh, my father all the old bird songs. He incorporated us kids into uh, the bird singing and my sisters into the dancing. And then my uncle joined in. And then pretty soon, it was revived again. We've actually found a piece of our culture that we can actually hang on to now, that we're not going to lose anymore. We started at the same place we left in the beginning. People searching and longing for a home. This giant mountain was too big to, to cross over. And as they sang the bird songs, miraculously they were changed into birds and they flew over. So we became human again. That's what the bird songs mean to us. 
it helped us find our home.